look so deadly. And just check out how much malevolence it's putting out. Which means it's not a Therian. Let's retreat. We've got no reason to pick a fight with something we can't handle. I do. Oh, you're up for it? What? What are you doing? She's right. Fighting this creature is a good way to end up dead. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, no turning back now. Damn it, this was a part of the plan. Yeah, but training like this doesn't come around every day. Be on your guard. One long move and you're done for. I know. That's the fun part. This one definitely puts up a better fight than your average demon. Is there any hope of actually defeating this thing? I'll do whatever it takes. That's my way. Sabine! Yeah. I see you're out for blood, as usual. You knew, didn't you, Isaac? Out of my way. What? Are you protecting the dragon? She's not a dragon! Huh? Back off, or I'll make you back off. <laughs> Got away. <sighs> that hurts, babe. And here we hadn't seen each other in so long. Hold it. Is that dragon someone you knew? I told you, she's not a dragon. Check out my pecs, and the dragon have some kind of close ties. Did I hear you right? We're talking about a dragon here. I know what I said. But how could that be? When Malakim are tainted by malevolence, a dragon is what ultimately results. So you're saying that dragon was a Moloch Zavid once knew? She must be who he was praying for back in town. Yeah, most likely. But do Malakim put out malevolence like humans do? No. Not by themselves, they don't. But if one remains in contact with humans or demons who do, it will eventually taint her, and she will become a dragon. What about you, kiddo? You feel anything weird after you got thrown into the Earth Pulse at the Empyrean's throne? I did, yeah. Can't say I'm surprised. The air there was thick with malevolence being sent on its way to Enominat. If I'd stayed there, I might be a dragon, too. Is having a vessel not enough to prevent a Moloch from transforming? A vessel can reduce the effect, but not eliminate it. 
By stripping their Malachim of consciousness, the Abbey Exorcists seem to be able to inhibit the transformation. But nothing in this world is guaranteed. Can a dragon ever be changed back into a Moloch? Nope. Just like with demons, there's no going back. Do they still hold on to some part of who they were? You saw that dragon. What do you think? Well, that's... But Zavid still won't kill it. Must be his creed at work. Aizen, listen. Whatever business you and Zavid have with that dragon, I don't care. Do what you have to. But I won't tolerate you getting the rest of us involved in it again. Do I make myself clear? You've got it. Good. Now, let's get back to the Therian hunt. We'll regroup in Titania. If what Aizen said is true, then could I wind up as a dragon someday? Or Aizen too? I don't... I don't know. Tight circles. Oh, perfect timing, Aizen. I's got a letter for you. A letter? Did you get a reply to that letter you sent? What's it say? What's it say? I know everything that you've done. Repent for your horrendous deeds, you monster. What did you do, Aizen? No idea. There's no sender written on here either. Who would write something so awful? Who cares? If I gave a damn about other people's feelings, I wouldn't be a pirate. I suppose that's true. Forget about it. What's the status of the other stuff? The Palmier made it just fine. But uh, we've run into some troubles finding the Nordals. My deepest apologies. What are Nordals? Nordals used to be given out by Empyrean temples. If you collect a set of four, you find happiness. Or oh, so they said. Nowadays, there's only four left. Red, blue, green, and black. Even worse, nobody hardly knows nothing about them. Dolls of the Empyreans? Do you think they're like that one we saw of Aminoch in that shop in Isolt? Kind of. But these are less gloomy looking and more, uh... Hmm... How can I describe it? Something like a quiet radiance? A quiet radiance? <laughs> That's perfect! I... think I get it. I'd never have pegged you as a collector of religious claptrap, Aizen. Think they'll help keep the Reaper away? Probably not. But in the off chance they actually work, they'll keep her safe. Her? Hey, that letter Aizen sent off earlier was addressed to a woman, wasn't it? <laughs> Our little Luffy said is growing up. N no I wasn't implying she was his girlfriend. Her writing just seemed more mature, and... It's nothing like that. She's my younger sister. I didn't know you had a sister. She's the only family I have left. She and I live apart for various reasons. I'm guessing your death curse is one of them, huh? Mogilu! Hmm. So that's why. I'd be happy to help you look for those dolls, Aizen. Are you sure? Yeah. 
Okay, then. Thanks. I saw Benwick and the other crew members get into a serious fight over whether cats or dogs were better. I don't get what the big deal is. I can't believe you could say such a thing! No conflict is more perilous than the one that has dogged mankind since the dawn of civilization! In the shadow of every war are the battles of dog lovers and cat lovers. Between each side lies a divide, maybe not all that deep, but unbridgeable all the same. I'd say we're lucky that the squabble you saw didn't escalate into anything more serious. I had no idea it was such a big deal. So what side do all of you fall on? I am, without a doubt, a cat person. Cats and witches have a long history together. Personally, I prefer dogs because they can cohabit with humans while following rules. But I like cats too, because they're cute. What about you, Rokuro? Shigure liked cats, so I don't. But I like dogs even less. Always wagging their tails for their masters. <laughs> I feel the same way. Dogs will trade anything for food. Learning tricks, wagging their tails, getting friendly, and in time, even forgetting to howl. I think that's too cynical. Dogs make efforts to please humans so that we can live together. They're friendly and compassionate creatures. Then does that make you a cat person, Aizen? Actually, I like squirrels best. When I lived with my sister, the nearby forest had lots of nice, fluffy squirrels that would let me pet them. This isn't about squirrels. It's about cats and dogs. You have to pick a side. If I had to choose, yeah, it'd be cats. There's something lovable about the way they act, especially when you spoil them. It reminds me a lot of my sister. What about you, Velvet? Cats or dogs? Dogs. They don't betray you. You always have to be so serious, don't you? So Velvet and Eleanor like dogs, while Mogilu and Aizen prefer cats. And Rokuro doesn't care for either one. That makes you our tiebreaker, kiddo. The fate of this showdown is in your hands. It is? Now that you're no longer the Abbey's dog, perhaps you're thinking of being one for Velvet's column? What has that got to do with anything? We're just talking about which animal we like. If you're getting so angry over this, he's going to have no choice but to pick dogs. I just told you- No more fighting! This is clearly getting out of hand, so why don't you all agree that you're Bienfu people and make up already? And what makes you special enough to have Bienfu people? Because I can be loyal like a dog, but also do my own thing like a cat. If you pick me, everybody wins. I don't think it works that way. Everything's all fixed up. Now to polish this ship from top to bottom. You really throw your back into your work, don't you? Why shouldn't I? The Von Eltias are pride and joy our weapon. And most importantly, our home. I'm sure you've heard this before, but she's one odd-looking ship. The Von Eltia was built by the Kingdom 12 years ago, using the very best technology available. She was designed for search and seizure operations on the high seas. Apparently, her unusual design comes from an engineer who is familiar with technology from the far continent. But on her maiden voyage, a string of mysterious accidents took the lives of the captain, then the second, and then the third in command. People thought the ship was bad luck. She was about to be scrapped when Captain Eifried came and snatched her for himself. If the ship was bad luck, why did Eifried want it? Well, I'm sure part of it was that he wanted a sturdy ship, capable of reaching the far continent. But when I asked him why, he said, she looks interesting. She's too interesting if you ask me. We've been chased by storms, struck by icebergs, attacked by a giant whale. You name it. Three years ago when the first mate arrived, it all made sense. To think we'd been haunted by a reaper the whole time. Oh, come on. Don't go blaming the captain and the first mate for every bad thing that happens. I bet you're all just frustrated because you're forced to go where they tell you. None of us are forced to be here. We're here because we choose to be here. 
And we do so fully knowing what sort of men the captain and the first mate are. Anyone can leave the crew whenever they like. We're free pirates, each of us, here because we want to be. Some of us love adventure, some are looking to test their fate, and some are just searching for a good place to die. We're a ragtag bunch of rogues, that's for sure, but not a one of us has died carrying regret or resentment. So we're glad to help out you and yours, but you'd best not forget what we stand for. I won't. They're quite the crew, aren't they? Were all those accidents truly caused by your power? Yeah. I've been searching far and wide for a way to lift the Reaper's curse. But when I couldn't find a single thread to follow on this continent, I turned my eyes to the other side of the ocean. And that's why you boarded this ship. And a fine ship she is. The Von Eltia was built from 1,000-year-old wood, you know. Before I found my coin, she was my vessel. But then the accidents came. And then Eifried stole the ship. Did he know you were on board? Definitely. He had pretty solid resonance going for him. Although at first, I think he assumed I was just a dour-eyed lubber worthy of little notice. I suppose being a Reaper tends to take its toll like that. <laughs> no argument there. But still, whether they could see me or not, they didn't act any differently at all. I fought my damn curse with everything I had. And Eifried and his crew fought right along with me. Hell, we even finally made it to the Far Continent. And you didn't find anything there? To help with your curse? I didn't even look. But that's why you went there, isn't it? Eventually, I just got tired of fighting back. The crew, they taught me how to feel alive. And the joy of pursuing my dreams alongside good friends. I guess a dragon was a bit much to take on, even for the Reaper. You should get some rest. We all should. I'll just get the crew started on readying the ship for our next departure. All right, you go do that. Lafayette, you should get some rest too. I'm fine. It's more important that I focus on finding an actual Therian this time. I'm going to take another try at sensing the Earth Pulse points. <sighs> You're as stubborn as ever, Fee. I lost a bet to a young man, and he dared me to prove my courage by sailing out to a Class 4 island. Now, I can handle myself, but man, it ain't fun and games there. I nearly got killed by demons. You actually stepped foot on a Class 4 island? Not even. I was still approaching it by ship when this stuff that looked like spider silk started spreading round. These bug-looking demons were using the stuff to try and climb aboard my ship. Damnation! The crew cut those threads as fast as anything, and we got the hell out of there. The whole thing left me bawling. Well, I'm glad to see you made it out safely. I'd suggest not going near there again. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't planning on it. I had enough of that place to last me a lifetime.
Don't push yourself too hard now, Lafayette. said. You hear me? I hear you. I just... I told everyone I could find the Therians, but... I've only sent us to the wrong places. Aizen, is there any way to boost Amalok's powers? <sighs> I guess it's okay for me to tell you this. The majority of Malakim today have their consciousnesses sealed away to be used as mere tools for the exorcists. But originally, Malakim were beings who received prayers from people and in return bestowed their blessings upon nature and mankind. So you're saying that when humans pray to a Malak, the Malak receives great strength? Yes, in general at least. Some Malakim, like me, buck the system and bring about misfortune rather than divine grace. Oh, that's unfortunate. But who would ever pray to me? Maybe you didn't lead us to any Therians, Fee, but it's not like we came back empty-handed. We found Ori Kalkum to use against Shigure, and we also learned we can hold our own against a dragon. Velvet. So where should we go next, Fee? North Gand! There's a big Earth Pulse point north of Helavis! Works for me. Aizen? We can leave whenever you want. Doesn't matter to me. And I'm all set. Let's make our way to the harbor. When I say prayers, I don't mean outright worshipping. All I'm talking about are earnest thoughts and feelings directed at you. I see. So I'm already receiving prayers then. The next target is north of Helavis, near the Faldi's ruins. In light of everything we know, I'd say it's highly likely we'll find a Therian there. Let's hope! Then we should make our first stop, Port Helavis. With the, uh, mischief we got into last time, getting into the city might prove difficult. Benwick, how are things in Helavis right now? That shipping guild that used to handle our mooring is pretty much toast, but for some reason, the Abbey isn't watching the port as much as they once were. Unfamiliar ships have been hauling in relief supplies, so if we pose as one of the transport ships, I think we can slip in. And if we divert some supplies to an unofficial channel, we might be able to secure a new mooring partner. Smuggling in relief supplies for our own disaster. Cheeky bastards, aren't we? It's what'll get us in. That much is true. It's a plan. Roger. I'll get right on it. Exorcists don't pray to their tethered Malachim, do they? You mean something besides our oaths? An oath is a magical formula that grants you power in exchange for binding you to a rule, right? Yes, though that is simplifying it a bit. When Malachim receive human prayers, they bestow their blessings upon people in nature. Aizen told me that we Malachim grow stronger when humans pray to us. Prayers and blessings? I've never heard of that. I used to think the same way as the other exorcists. Malakim are merely tools that allow us the use of arts. Yeah, 
That's what I figured. But Inominat is different. The exorcists all worship him. They have faith in his mighty power. And not only that, the people of this nation pray to the Empyrean for salvation, just as Artorius instructs them. Ah, I get it now. See the wheels turning, do you, kiddo? Huh? Artorius founded the Abbey within the existing Church of the Empyreans, so that he could direct the people's thoughts towards Inominat, so that even while they lionize Artorius as their savior, they are made aware of Inominat's presence behind him. Everyone starts believing in Inominat. The prayers of the entire world go to him, becoming his power. After the centuries-long decline of Empyrean worship, he becomes stronger than anyone today could imagine. The pieces do fit. Oaths, prayers, blessings, the demon blight. So much in this world is affected by matters of the heart. They hold magical power, both effective and meddlesome. We are truly going up against the rest of the entire world, aren't we? Don't look so troubled, Eleanor. I'm gonna do my best to get stronger, so believe in me. I am a Moloch, after all. Oh, Luffy said. You've become so brave so quickly. Have I? But you're still cute when you get embarrassed. Hey, why is your face so red? Huh? My face isn't red. Huh? Hmm. Hey, Aizen. What's it feel like to get a letter? I don't feel anything, nor do I want or need to. There's no joy in receiving these things. Huh? Why not? <laughs> Don't be so shocked. Look, it's just an invoice from the Turtles. What's the big deal anyway? Do you wish you'd get letters too? Yeah. But I don't have anyone to send letters to. Let alone anyone who would send me any. Luffy said, I've got a letter for you. What? Really? Who could it be from? The sender is... Bienfu? Yep, yep! You got a letter from yours truly! I figured you'd be wanting someone to send you a letter right about now, so I wrote one up for you. What do you think? You're happy, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, Bienfu. I'll even read it for you! Ahem! <coughs> Dear Moloch Luffy Set, I hope that this letter finds you in good health and high spirits. Thankfully, I'm doing well myself, with no major changes to report. Bienfu's taking all this so seriously. It's so rare to actually see him like this. As you're aware, I've been spending my days ironing Magilu's outfits, sewing her buttons, and washing her hat and tremendously long socks. Recently, however, I made the mistake of remarking to her that she might have been quite as slender as she once was in her younger years. She hung me upside down from the roof in the middle of the cold. I nearly became a frozen Norman sickle. It was so horrible that I couldn't stop my tears from flowing down my little cheeks. Bien! Ah, <laughs> uh, there's the Bienfu we know and love. But all you wrote about in that letter was yourself, and you even read it out loud yourself. That's okay. Thanks, Bienfu. It feels nice to get a letter. That's so kind of you to say. I think I might cry again. Bien! The supplies are loaded. We can make for Helavis whenever you want. That was fast. If we weren't hard workers, we wouldn't be sailors. <laughs> Eleanor! <laughs> oh, what's wrong, Kamoana? She, uh, she said she had a dream about her mom. When mommy saw me, she said I looked scary. That she didn't want a scary little girl like me. <laughs> Your mother would never say that, sweetheart. But how can you be sure? Well, uh, how do I put it? 
I know because I know. You're just lying to make me feel better. <laughs> is the part I hate about little kids. I'm not a little kid! I hate you, Velvet! I hate That's you! That's right. Let it all out. Stop it! Stop it! Mommy! I saw my mommy! She didn't want me! <laughs> She managed to cry herself to sleep. They're not rational creatures. Sometimes you just gotta let them cry it out. You seem used to it. I guess you could say that. Luffy usually kept himself together when he was younger. But when he was really little, he had times like this every now and then. Uh. And on that note, let's take off all we can. My leash. Dial, I leave Kamoana in your care. I'll do what I can, but kids as sweet and honest as her are harder to deal with than corrupt bureaucrats. An outlaw prince and a talking lizard are no replacement for a mother. I do hope Kamalana isn't crying anymore. Yeah. Shush. How long is it going to be before you send in another exorcist to replace Lady Teresa? With these demons clamoring at her gates, none of us feel safe anymore. You have our deepest sympathies, but we were sent here on a different mission. That's what the last exorcist who came here said before leaving for the north. What could be up there that's worth all that attention? Surely we're not all being punished by the Abbey for what happened with Medissa, are we? That is not the case. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have business to attend to. So the exorcists are just passing through town and heading straight north. Odd. <sighs> Ever since the Calamity showed up, everything's just gone to pot, I say. Calamity? What do you mean? I mean the demon who barged in and made a mess of our fair city. She's a nasty creature of pure evil, with an arm that eats anything that gets in her way. Haven't you heard of her? The Calamity's been rampaging across the whole kingdom, not just here. Scant few have seen her and survived. Huh. You don't say. After the Calamity raised our ships and our port, the shipping guild fell apart and our trade routes got poached by other ports. It's bad. The town relies on trade to make ends meet. People are abandoning the city and our streets are no longer safe. Not to mention the demon blight spreading again. Just the other day, a little kid turned into a demon. Just like that. What a world. What a world. What have the exorcists been doing during all of this? Well, Lady Teresa was in charge of this region, but she came up short against the Calamity and got a fat demotion for her troubles. Several new exorcists have been reassigned here, but once they arrive, they all traipse right off to the ruins up north. This has to be Medissa's fault. If she hadn't gone and done something so stupid, Medissa. That's enough. This isn't something for outsiders to know. You're right. Sorry. <sighs> I'm really worried about what's going to come of this town. It sounds like Helifis isn't what it used to be these days. We need to ask around and find out more about what's going on here. Agreed. Especially regarding the Abbey and those ruins. I'm also curious about this Medissa woman. The ruins part makes sense, since the Earth Pulse Point might be there. 
but why do you care who Medissa is? Just a hunch. Something tells me she's worth looking into. You're not gonna look into this calamity chick? She sounds like a real terror. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I already know plenty about what makes her tick. Are you all right, Madam Eleanor? Don't let those people get you down. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. Uh, but could you not do that thing where you blow air on me to dry my tears? All right, I'll just pat your head then. That won't be necessary either. But really, things are in a terrible state. The town burned, the guild ruined, the abbey all but gone. It won't be a functioning port for some time. You can't fault them for being upset. They had it real good here until we came along. Those Helavisians were like spoiled children. How so? Helavis was once a tiny fishing village. The bountiful northern seas provided plenty enough fish to sustain their trade. But Flamestone gave them an easy way to get rich. And once they got a taste, they abandoned their old craft. And now they're paying the price. But I've heard that the cooling temperature has covered half the northern sea in ice drift, making fishing much more difficult. Uh, but the drifting ice carries tiny organisms, enriching the waters where it melts. The fish should be more plentiful than ever. I suppose you may have a point. We're ones to talk after what we did, but taking the easy path, then complaining as soon as it gets hard, that seems... Spoiled, yes. <laughs> you said it, Luffy said. I think my appetite's getting a little overindulgent, too. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Just means you're healthy. Giant squid come to these waters in this season. Should I ask Benwick to fish some up? Yeah, and some normal octopuses, too. <laughs> Calamity is... us, isn't it? Well, we've been waging war with the Abbey everywhere we go, and now we're about to take it to a new level. If we pull the next Therian off of the Earth Pulse Point, it'll likely be Kamoana's village all over again. The same devastation? Ooh! I wonder if there's something worse than Calamity that they can call us! This is no laughing matter. People turn into demons in part due to their own malevolence. It's not like they're entirely innocent. But if there's someone out there who's being forced to act as Inominat's mouth, like Kamawana was, isn't saving them the right thing to do? I cannot argue with that, but... You don't have to worry. I'm the one who will devour the barrier. And I'm the one who will do what needs to be done. Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sorry, I'm busy try someone else. <sighs> Excuse me. My name is Eleanor, and I'm an exorcist on patrol with the Abbey. I was wondering if I could solicit your honest opinion about how this town is being run. Oh, I didn't realize there was an exorcist with you. Yes, please tell the Abbey we want Lady Teresa back. Her governance was strict, it's true, but at least we could live in safety. Now, all the exorcists run off to the Faldi's ruins and leave us here in the lurch. They value some dusty, faraway ruins over the lives of the good, hard-working citizens here. It's just wrong. We've always been cooperative with the Abbey's demands. And now this is what we get in return. I... I see. The Abbey appreciates your, uh, candor. I'll pass your comments on to my superiors. Oh, poor Medissa. Are you a friend of hers? Yeah, she used to live just down the road from me. Medissa raised her daughter Diana all on her own. And then they up and murdered the girl. Murdered? By whom? The exorcists. Once Diana caught the demon blight, the damned Abby exterminated her like a rat. How cruel. I felt just terrible, but I suppose there wasn't much else to be done with her. But Medissa, she hated the Abbey for what they'd done, so she barricaded herself inside the sanctuary. 
She just kept on screaming, all like, demons have feelings too. What happened after that? I wouldn't have been surprised to see her executed. But luckily, she was spared that much. An exorcist stopped the guard who was about to cut her down, said, Don't kill her. She's receptive. Receptive, huh? I think that's their way of referring to her deep faith. Before all this, she was a real devout lady. That was certainly kind of them. Medissa really cherished her daughter. Can't much blame her for blowing up like that. But the Abbey, they don't care so much about feelings. Reason is all that matters to them. They don't take kindly to people disrupting their order. <sighs> If you go north from Helebees, you'll come upon the Faldi's Ruins, which are Abbey property. Mainly, it's used as a checkpoint for hauling ore that's extracted out of Mount Killerhouse. But between you and me, I hear the Abbey also uses it as a prison camp. A prison camp? Are they capturing demons? Heavens no! The demons they kill on sight! No, these prisoners are human criminals. Not long ago, this woman killed someone and locked herself up in the sanctuary. I hear she got hauled off to the camp. Why do you think the Abbey would use the ruins for a prison camp? Who knows? Maybe they need a place to deal out their harshest punishments. The Abbey's not known to be forgiving, after all. <laughs> uh, but these are just nasty rumors I heard. Of course, I don't believe a word of it. Why, certainly. I can't believe the demon blight has spread into the city now. Scary times. Well, the one who caught it was a little girl, so they were able to deal with her before anything bad happened. But the problem was that the demon girl's mother tried to hide her. That's only human nature. These are dangerous times. We dare not let our emotions control us. One person's selfishness could endanger the entire community. Oh, uh, right. Thankfully, an upstanding citizen noticed something suspicious and reported the child to the Abbey. But the mother went mad and killed him in retribution. And what makes it all the more lurid is, 
I heard the man she killed was a fellow she was actually thinking about marrying. The daughter had been dead set against her mother remarrying. You can taste the irony. That's... that's horrible. Eh, she had it coming. If there's anything worse than demons, it's people who can control themselves. So, Diana was a girl turned demon who was killed by an exorcist. And her mother Medissa hated the Abbey for it. And the Abbey is using the Faldi's ruins up north as a prison camp. It's a lot like what happened to Kamawana, isn't it? It's natural for a mother to love her own child. To make that a crime. What I'm curious about is the use of the word receptive to describe Medissa. So long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therian shall be forever reborn. If our interpretation of that ancient book is right, it likely means she's receptive to Inominat's power. Meaning they brought Medissa to those ruins where there's an Earth Pulse point, and then they made her into a Therian. That would certainly put all the pieces together, yep. Plus, if this Therian the Abbey created already hates them, that's all the better for us. Yeah, I imagine she'd be willing to work with us. Although, it sounds almost too easy. Did I jinx it? I just jinxed it, didn't I? Probably, but we won't find out until we try. True. Let's head for the ruins. And don't worry, you totally jinxed it. The Faldi's ruins are north of Helavis. The Earth Pulse Point is to the north, too. Probably in the very same place. I'll finish this now. <laughs> You don't want to make me angry. Helavis is different now, isn't it? Maybe, but you've changed too. True. When I first met all of you, I never could have imagined I would go on such a journey. I could barely even think then. But then Velvet let me keep this compass. And Aizen and Rokuro taught me to be myself. They certainly did. And look at Dial. He's a regular part of the Von Altia's crew now. Even Restless Bienfu and Grimoire are now part of our merry band. Yep! Hey, aren't you forgetting someone? Oh, and the Prince and his Hawk and Kurogane and Kamawana are with us. Listen, I've got more part in this tale than any of them! Hush. Whatever I'd say, you'd say it doesn't matter to you. At last you begin to understand me. Magic Hazam! I didn't think Northgand would be this cold. But Northgand was Teresa's territory. Wouldn't you have been here with her? I think having my awareness controlled meant my senses were dulled as well. I see. But the cold doesn't seem to be bothering Aizen at all. In fact, everyone else seems comfortable here. If you shiver at these temperatures, you'll never make it on the high seas. In my youth, I practiced the blade under the blazing sun and through raging blizzards. Besides, when I turned into a demon, extreme temperatures ceased to affect me. The same thing happened to me. I used to hate winter. So that's some good luck. But what of yourself? You seem to be handling it just fine. I'm... freezing, actually. I don't know how you stand it. I loathe the cold more than anything. That's why I've armed myself with a secret weapon. I've stuck thin, yet powerful, cuckoo brand hand warmers all over myself! I even packed them in my shoes! Really? That sounds amazing! I'm willing to share, if you act like a dove. What? Go cuckoo, like a dove! Please share your cuckoo warmers with me. Cuckoo... Hmm, you're no velvet, that's for sure. <sighs> Look, no guards. I think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'd say good. We can march straight in. Yeah. 
Are we ready for this? There are a lot of Molochim posted here. They're probably here to protect the Therian, right? One would assume. The exorcists controlling them can't be far then. Be careful. did it.
These ruins... This feels like a sad place. Sad? In what way? Sorrow permeates this place. As if left behind by people who suffered torment and death. I guess that's a weird impression to get by just looking at some ruins, huh? I'd trust my feelings if I were you. They'll often lead you to the truth of things. Besides, what you're feeling would explain a thing or two about these ruins. It would? Rather than attempting to impress visitors with beauty and opulence, the building and its passageways were built with strength and stability in mind. And that means... They were anticipating volcanic earthquakes. And they expected that someone might turn violent in these passageways. Not a bad observation. And what would bring such savage people to these halls? Surely they weren't just passing through. Then this passage must have led to somewhere. Some room or structure deeper within. A prison for the worst criminals. Or maybe a battle arena. And that's what gave you a sense of sadness. If it was an arena, then treasure for the victors might be hidden away somewhere. Why would it be hidden? Well, those fighter types might not have been all that nice. And the people who built this place seem to have been the cautious type. Hidden treasure, huh? Where do you think... Uh... Save your speculation for another day, you two. We have a Therian to find. Right. Sorry. Uh. So, about that treasure... Aizen! Ugh. We'll talk about this later, Lafayette. All right. Doll. It looks a lot like Grimoire and Bienfu, but there's something different about it that I can't quite put my finger on. I agree. Those two are positively gloomy, but this doll seems calming, yet glamorous too. Like I said, a quiet radiance. Yeah. You think so? I think it's more lethargic or absent-minded. Like I can't tell what's going on in its head. Either way, I'm a 
thousand times cuter than that thing! What's cute about you? People who keep their faces covered are creepy. <laughs> I don't know. There's definitely something off about it. It's charming, but a little ominous. Like I can never entirely be at ease around it, if that makes sense. You think so? Actually, I think it's cute. It reminds me of a little baby. You think this looks like a baby? I remember when my sister was about as small as that doll. She had the tiniest little hands, and she tried to grip my pinky as best she could. Really? I'd take my pinky with her fingers wrapped around it and poke her cheek, and she'd just be all smiles. I swore to myself I'd always do whatever I could to protect her. Once she got a little older and started fixing meals, lots of weird things began to happen around us. Wherever we went, she was in danger. Demons attacked us. A dragon tried to kidnap her. That's when I first realized what it was that I carried. That the cause of all my sister's pain was my blessing. My reaper's curse. So, you left her behind and went on your search for a way to break the curse. Right. And that's when I met Eifried. It was from him that I first heard about the Nordals. He thought the stories about them were all just baseless rumors. I guess we'll never know for sure unless we gather them all. But... Hmm? What is it? I think something good will happen once they're all together. Why do you say that? Well, because we found this doll, you shared some of your past with us. That makes me kinda happy. So I think we should get the other three, so more happy stuff happens. <laughs> Hard to argue with you there. A forward kill. Scout.
think we have a chance. That wasn't worth the effort.
How's Medissa been acting? She's calm. It looks like letting her in on the truth worked as well as we thought it might. Good. Maybe she'll be easier to control now. Halt! Who are you? Medissa really is here. But what's this about the truth and controlling her? I don't think we have a chance! <laughs> Victory is ours!
If you want to live, get out of my way. You're strong, but I'm stronger. Victory is ours! She's a Therian! Third time's the charm, eh, kid? Yeah. You're Medissa? I am. And who might you be? We're like you. We carry grudges against the Abbey. And Shepherd Artorius. It's gonna be okay. We came to get you out of here, Medissa. There's no escape. What? Please, don't give up. I can- No, you don't understand. There's no escape for you. If you dare sully Shepherd Artorius's ideals and the light the Abbey shines upon the world, I will kill you all! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> She's the Abbey's lucky now. Way to jinx it, Rokuro. They just keep coming. That snake woman keeps summoning them. If we don't go after her directly, there'll be no end to it. Your left hand. <laughs> don't tell me you're the calamity. Why are you doing this, Medissa? Why fight for the Abbey after they forced you to become a Therian? They didn't. I became one of my own free will. Your daughter! Slain in an exorcist's hands! You must hate the Abbey for that, don't you? 
Oh, I feel hate. Toward a world where demons spawn from the people's malevolence. You know about malevolence? The exorcist told me the truth. Diana turned into a demon because of the malevolence she radiated. I knew what I had to do. Become a Therian, and devour malevolence so that such a tragedy would never repeat itself. It matters not what dreadful form my body will take. I will revive Enominati and change this wretched world! If that's how it is, fine. We'll take you by force. Will not be in vain! Rescue woman! She's just a grieving mother! Ready to die? Think you can dodge? Just uh, try! Uh, Perfect uh, they have! over. Curse you, Lord of Calamity. Lord of Calamity? That's the name of the Demon Lord who will bring about the Age of Chaos. The unrepentant embodiment of malevolence whose blind pursuit of self-gratification will rain destruction upon the world. The irredeemable, uncontrollable personification of human sins. An evil like you! Demon, Therian, Lord of Calamity, call me whatever you like. But if I'm the supposed Lord of Demons, then you're just a minion to be used as I please. Nothing more. No, I refuse. What happened to my Diana was my fault. That's why I will fight you until my dying breath! Stop! Don't get in my way! No! Enough mothers have died. I won't let you join them! Eleanor and Kamawana, they both lost their mothers, too. It's a terrible thing. Kamawana? A little girl that the Abbey forcefully made into a Therian. Her mother tried to save her, but she failed. All she could do was to offer her own life to fill her child's empty stomach. <sighs> Kamawana's been crying ever since. She misses her mother. If you die here, I can only imagine how sad that would make your Diana. Diana! 
You don't need me anymore, Mom. I get it. You love this new dad more than your own daughter! No, honey. I did it for you. But you really thought I stopped loving you. And the malevolence made you into a demon. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Diana. Medissa. She'll be all right. She's just unconscious. Let's grab her and haul her back. I'll place her under a binding art, just in case. Hmm. Gotta hand it to the Abbey. Very resourceful, taking advantage of Medissa's regrets like that. Making her into a Therian who would do their bidding. It's... It's just so cruel. Who cares? Reason above all, no? It's true. The way I feel goes against all reason. There's no telling what'll happen to Helifes once we take Medissa out of here. And yet I'm doing exactly that, all on account of my own hang-ups. Even crushing Medissa's honest resolve. According to reason, malevolence is the fault of the individual. You assume no responsibility or guilt for what happens to them. I refuse to turn a blind eye to the consequences of my actions. I chose this path to seek the truth, not to deny it. If I'm to betray reason, then that is the very least I should do. You're too much, you know that? You and Medissa both. Quit overthinking things. Just blame all the suffering on the Lord of Calamity. Makes life easier. Velvet, I... I'm not trying to cheer you up. I'm just saying it doesn't bother me. Whatever's coming, I can handle it. I was wondering, do you think I hurt Medissa, saying that stuff to her back there? I suppose you might have. But I was thinking the exact same things you were. Losing a mother. It's always a tragedy. I'm glad you stepped in and stopped her. Thanks. <sighs> that Eleanor. 
I swear, she feels way more responsibility for everything than she needs to. You think we need to worry? What if she pushes too far and erupts with malevolence? Malevolence is born out of many things. A prideful ego, the self-righteousness that turns a blind eye to one's inner contradictions. Eleanor is different. She's mindful of her ego and strives to confront her inconsistencies of character. She has a purity of heart that won't be tainted by the emotions that create malevolence. No other quality is as essential for an exorcist. So she's probably okay? For now, at least. But human hearts can be fickle things. Who knows what the future holds? Eh, I doubt you got anything to worry about. For most exorcists, purity is a construct of the Abbey's teachings. But Eleanor, she's the real deal. <laughs> she's not your average exorcist, I'll give you that. Purity is handy for any exorcist. But more than that, it's a rare and precious temperament for living. Everybody's got an ego and certain internal contradictions to some degree. Facing one's own ugliness in an honest manner is never easy. To be a normal human is to live carrying malevolence. It's just how much you let it control you that varies. I guess malevolence might just be a fact of life, huh? But Artorius can't accept that. Well, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Let's slip through town and head for Titania before that changes. So this is your secret hideout. Once I get free, he won't stand a chance. You all had better sleep with one eye open. Look how worried I am. Welcome back! That's Kamoana. <sighs> She's the same age as Diana. The Abbey really turns someone so young into a Therian? Would you be able to talk to her? Is this a trick? Kamoana may be a Therian, but deep down, she's still a normal little girl who misses her mother. I can't do anything to console her, no matter what I try. But if it were you... You okay? You can call me Medissa, all right? Do I scare you, honey? A little, but not as much as Velvet and Dial. But don't you think I'm scary? I had a bad dream earlier. My mommy said I looked scary and that she... She didn't want me anymore. She would never... Your mother would never think that about her daughter. But how do you know? Because I'm... I'm a mother, too. Mothers always love their children, no matter what. No matter if we die. No matter how the world changes. 
there's nobody who loves you more in the world than... than... It's okay. You don't have to cry. I hope Kamawana and Medissa won't have to feel so lonely anymore. Yeah. Trying to stop the waterworks gets old fast. Listen, if it's not too personal, was your mother, uh... She's dead. I lost her when I was even younger than you. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. It's fine. It just means we've got things in common. So no feeling sad and alone, okay? Oh no, I'm fine. I don't feel lonely or anything, I swear. What's gotten into you? You're so strange sometimes. No, I'm not. Eleanor, I'll have you watch over Kamoana and Medissa. Yes, of course. I'd be honored. Thank you. Are exorcists supposed to be so polite to a grand poobah of calamity or whatever? Sh sure why not? Besides, the demon lord ought to not trouble herself over such trivialities. Velvet, Grimoire's calling for you. She says to bring Lafayette and meet her at the observation tower. Got it. We better get going then.